Hi, my name is Josh Francia. I'm the Chief Growth Officer at BlueShift. And today I'd like to talk to you about how you can create continuous customer engagement and unlock growth. Customers share more data with companies now than they have ever done before. In fact, customers shared over 2.5 quintillion, that's 18 zeros, of data every single day. And 90% of the world's data was actually created in just the last two years. So we share this data, this, this amazing amount of data through explicit interactions like creating a profile and entering personal information and implicit interactions like clicking on a link in an email or visiting your favorite website or favoring an item, um, all, all those things leave behind a trail of insights and preferences. And over the last several years, there has been a rise in privacy, data privacy concerns. A recent study by Deloitte found that 81% of US consumers feel that they have lost control over the way their personal data is collected and used. What is more interesting though, is why consumers maybe feel this way. In another study, it found that 75% of consumers feel that the data collected by companies is used to benefit the company more than the consumer. That same study found that most consumers, 76%, are willing to share personal data with the company if they receive certain benefits or enriched experiences. So it's not that the majority of customers are afraid of sharing data, it's quite the opposite but they just want that that data they share to be used to benefit them and not the company. They want reciprocity. We'll give you personal information. You make our experience better, easier, and more intuitive. Sound good? Nothing frustrates these connected consumers more than when a company asks for a lot of personal information and then doesn't use it to actually enhance or make their, their customer experience better. It's like the customer is in a perpetual groundhog day, always having to answer the same exact questions and reintroduce themselves all the time. We've all experienced this all the time. Let me give you a real life example with my bank who shall remain nameless. I've been with my bank a very long time, like 25 years. And being a bank, they know a lot about me. They know my name. They know my birth date, they know where I live, what I purchase, my assets, my mortgage, and so on. I have their mobile app, I use their website, and every once in a while, I'll even go into a local branch. Now, every time I interact with my bank, it feels like they're meeting me for the very first time. I'm on the mobile app, I'm logged in, and I see an option to say, mortgage refinance analysis listed under my current mortgage account with this bank. I mean, who doesn't want to see if they could save some money refinancing? So my expectations are when I touch this link, I'll be brought to a new screen inside the app that it will show me the different options for my exact mortgage. And they'll show me whether or not I can lower my monthly payment or lower the total cost of my loan. If I choose one of those options, I'll be asked to confirm some information and my refinance application will be submitted and I'll hear back and be able to track my progress through the app. But when I actually click this link, this is what happened. I got kicked out of the app and brought to a brand new landing page that asked me for my name, my email address, my phone number, my zip code, you know who I am. I am on your mobile app, logged into my account right now. I mean, we've known each other for 25 years. And because my expectations are, are not even remotely met, I leave the site, close the app and forget about the whole refinancing process altogether. Now this is happening all the time to your customers and you likely don't even know it. In fact, a recent survey found that only 5% of marketers claimed that their company personalized customer experiences on a one-to-one -one level. 
As customers share more personal data with companies, their expectations of a frictionless, consistent experience increases. So why do most companies fail in meeting these new expectations? I doubt there are any company meetings that start out with an action item called, how can we piss off our customers by pretending we don't know who they are? I mean, companies aren't intentionally creating poor experiences, but yet we all suffer from the lackluster, frustrating interactions on a daily basis. And the reason is simple. Companies can't access or activate their customer data in a way that actually helps their customers. I mean, it's crazy. Customer data is stored and federated across a myriad of data lakes and warehouses that are meant for compliance and internal reporting ad hoc analysis. I mean, customer data is stored to help the company, not help the customer. Customer data is simply just inaccessible to the marketing support product and other customer facing teams. This extremely rich data set is put to sleep and stored in places called redshift, which literally means moving away from something in this instance, your customer and Glacier, which literally moves barely moving. So in 2011, I was working at a large online travel company and we were in this customer data dilemma. As a travel company, as you can imagine, we have a lot of rich customer data. We knew where customers lived, where they like to travel, when they travel, their favorite room and rental car and flight preferences, but we couldn't access any of it. It wasn't in one place. In fact, it was in many data stores with fragments of information intentionally obfuscated to cr making creating a customer profile almost impossible. A small team got together with a simple goal. What if we could personalize the promotional emails we send based on a customer's previous trips and recent searches? And that was it. Well, we talked to every data and engineering team, learned how and where the data was stored and built some rudimentary processes to grab this data and store it in a new kind of database that was organized by the customer's email address. It was very simple. You enter the email address and instantly every trip, every search essentially was available to you. We then created very simple business rules um, to match customer signals with flight, hotel, and rental car options that we had in, in, our, in, our, in our wheelhouse. It took us about five months and we were finally ready to hit that first personalized email based on a full customer profile. I remember everyone was very, very nervous. This was a large departure from our typical batch and blast messaging of sales and limited time offers and best destinations for everybody to travel to. We launched it and the first year grew attributable revenue 60% year over year. The second year, 50% growth. The third year, 45% growth. Now, these are big numbers and you can see that growth rate year over year was unheard of. I mean, remember this is one of the largest online travel companies in the world. The revenue growth was also coming from our existing customers. Our revenue contribution from our existing customers went from less than 5% to almost 20% in just a couple of years. We had unlocked our first party data by making it accessible to the marketing and product and other teams. Well, in 2014, several startups started to think about how to solve this problem by introducing new technologies that revolves around the customer and all their interactions. While it took a few years for these technologies to kind of coalesce around a standard term, customer data platforms promised to give marketers a way to access their first party data. This new technology removed internal hurdles and gave marketers a holistic view of their customer and the ability to segment and analyze their customers. Now with this consolidation of data around that single view of the customer, it opened up another area of opportunity for marketers artificial intelligence. Now, as the amount of data points increase, mathematicians and engineers converge into a new field called data science, using observed or historical data to make accurate predictions about future events or behavior. Now, until customer data platforms unify these vast troves of customer data uh, and, and put them into single profiles, the AI, the AI options that were available were pretty unusable or so inaccurate that marketers just didn't trust them for business decisions. 
But with all the data points neatly organized, AI regained the spotlight and was able to win the trust of marketers. Now, there are many types of AI, but for marketers, what really matters is explained in four simple words, who, what, when, and where. If AI can help the marketer determine who is in market to purchase or convert now, that immediately increases their efficiency by reducing that cost per acquisition. Marketers no longer have to waste their campaigns on audiences who aren't going to purchase, but instead they can focus their efforts and their spend where they have the greatest probability of a positive return. So once marketers have identified who is maybe say 97% in market to convert, then the next piece is to figure out, well, what offer or piece of content would be most relevant to them? For example, a clothing company may know, have the AI to know a group of customers are in market to purchase, but what product are they in market for? Are it shirts? Is it pants? Is it shorts? Is it shoes? Are they in market for shirts and shoes, but maybe not pants? Knowing what content resonates most with that audience is an important factor in making them buy from you versus your competitor. By using behavioral events coupled with product inventory, AI can predict which content each customer is, gonna, is most likely to engage with, thus increasing the probability they will convert. Let's just say our customer is in market to purchase a polo shirt and flip-flops. So you now know who is ready to convert and what content they are interested in, but if you message them at the wrong time, what will happen? We all operate on a subconscious timeline throughout our day, where our energy is focused on different priorities. We oscillate between work mode and workout mode, from family time to friend time. What if a customer is in purchase mode at 9 p.m., but and you send them a perfect marketing message at 7 a.m., when they are in get the kids to school mode? The headline may be so darn compelling that they actually will open it and look at it and glance at it for a second but then they will move on to other pressing items and generally forget about your message. What if AI could tell you not only who and what your customer is interested in, but also tell you when they're most likely to convert and engage down to the very hour. So in this example, let's assume that our customer is in product purchase mode at 9 PM. All right. AI has helped us a lot. They know who to target, what to offer and when to message them. Now, if we stop there, we'll do pretty well, but what if we could do even one better with solving that last piece of the puzzle about where, or maybe better said, which, which marketing channel is our customer most likely to engage on? If a marketer knew that a customer was 90% more likely to respond to an SMS than an email, don't you think the marketers would send a customer an SMS message? Of course they would. And with the last piece of AI, marketers can know now with a, like, a likelihood of an engagement across different marketing channels. So AI has told us that our customer is ready to buy a polo shirt and flip-flops. He is most likely to convert around 9 p.m. and he prefers us to send him an SMS text message. AI has made our marketers into superhuman fortune tellers. And it can do this across all of your customers all the time responding and reacting to new data points seamlessly. Okay, we've unified our data. We've given access to our marketers and AI has told us important insights about each customer and what and how we should market to them. And most CDPs end right there. These are called the pure player traditional CDPs. They provide a ton of insight to the marketer, but no value to the customer because the customer hasn't been exposed to any of this yet. And now the marketer has to figure out how to get these audiences and insights into several other platforms that can actually execute the campaigns that reach the customer. Now, of course, this can work, but it's highly inefficient. And there's, a, also, there's also a huge loss of fidelity of data as it's transferred from system to system, not to mention the amount of time and money it takes to operationalize this strategy is enormous. And there is a better way. Remember in 2014, when several startups were building ways to solve this customer data problem? Well, a small subset of those startups looked a little further down the road and realized without a way to act on this data, 
marketers wouldn't be able to fully realize the value of the data. These startups later called smart hub CDPs added a layer of decision making and marketing automation directly inside the platform. They allowed marketers to create campaign journeys, workflows, build templates and implement business rules all from the same platform where their customer data and profiles lived. They built integrations with the best delivery solutions across the entire customer stack from email, web, direct mail, mobile, SMS, paid media, contact centers, and more. This way, marketers should have a commission control to really understand their customers, decide how to talk to their customers, and then execute on those decisions all in one place. For example, they could send email messages out from three or four different email marketing providers and test inbox rates without changing any templates or business logic. All of the interaction data from these various delivery channels flows right back into the CDP layer and continues to enhance the customer profile. Now the marketer has everything they need to deliver that continuous experience that their customers expect. Now this is all very interesting, but it will remain forever just interesting if this strategy and technology combination doesn't result in significant business impacts. So let's take a minute and break down the impact that a continuous customer engagement has had on companies. First, let's, over, let's look at the overall impact of advanced marketing technology compared to basic or outdated technologies. In a recent survey, companies claim that using modern technology, modern marketing technology like Smart Hub CDPs, generate 81% increase in ROI, 49% increase in revenue, 44% increase in lifetime value, 48% increase in customer acquisition costs, and a 16% increase in greater customer engagement. That's the overall market view. But what about some specific examples in real life? Skillshare, which is an online learning platform which helps people learn new creative skills like illustration, photography, and writing, and so on from experts, needed to increase their student course signups, their enrollments. They unified their customer data. They used AI to identify which customers were most likely to enroll in a course and then executed these multi-touch campaigns to message those users across email and mobile. The result, an 89% increase in enrollments. Zumper, an online apartment rental platform which helps renters and owners list and lease their apartments, need to increase engagement from their email and mobile campaigns. They unified their customer data, they used AI to build out a recommended uh, apartments to show each customer based on their behavior and other customers' patterns. Then they orchestrated a multi-touch campaign across email, mobile, and their website. Well, the results, 128% increase in click-through rate across those campaigns. And lastly, LendingTree, an online financial marketplace which helps connect borrowers and lenders, needed to increase revenue from their most loyal customers. These customers would consume plenty of content on LendingTree's app and throughout and through their logged in My LendingTree experience. But all that time being spent wasn't translating into revenue. So LendingTree decided to use AI to determine when was the best time to message these people so they would actually convert. They unified their data, used engage time optimization AI, and executed their campaigns. The results, a 35% increase in revenue. Now listen, customers will continue to buy products and services they are interested. They're interested in. The challenge and opportunity you have as a company is to make sure that your engagement with the customer ensures that they buy from you and not your competitors. Your customers are begging you to use their data to make their experience faster, easier, and more intuitive. I encourage you to identify the pitfalls in your customer experience and then solve them with the advanced technology available with Smart Hub CDPs. These are purpose-built technology to help you bring you closer to your customer. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have found this helpful. Feel free to visit our virtual booth where we have a lot of reports and guides to help you get started. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out to me here um, on LinkedIn and email and on Twitter. Hope to talk to you soon.